Well, hi there. Arachnids are some of the coolest and most feared animals on the planet. This group includes animals like spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites. They are well-known animals that you probably interact with regularly, possibly more than you realize. But as it turns out, there are actually around 13 different orders of these fascinating creepy crawlies, and I'd like to explore every last one of them. What are they? Where are they found? How are they related? But to begin, arachnids are a class of arthropods in the subphylum Chelicerata. Being arthropods, they have an exoskeleton and jointed appendages and grow through ecdysis, the shedding of the cuticle. Chelicerae are claw-like mouthparts, and arachnids, being chelicerates, have them. In general, all arachnids have eight walking legs and another pair of appendages here up front that assist in feeding. Those are called pedipalps. They do not have wings or antenna, though, in some orders, one pair of legs are often modified to perform a function very similar to that of antenna. In general, arachnids have two body segments called tagmata. At the front is the prosoma, or cephalothorax, and at the rear is the opisthosoma, or abdomen. It seems that prosoma and opisthosoma are preferred over cephalothorax and abdomen. This is largely because the word cephalothorax means a fused head and thorax. But there's no evidence that the ancestors of arachnids ever possessed a thorax. So that wouldn't really be the case. Also, the opisthosoma does contain many organs atypical of an abdomen, uh, the heart and respiratory organs specifically. So it's more than just an abdomen. Arachnids are found on every continent. They're probably in your bedroom and living in your eyebrows. So you may never sleep again. Let's instead dig into the 13 extant orders of arachnids. Now, I will begin by telling you that there is a lot in question about our understanding of the relationships between the 13 arachnid orders. Their phylogeny has a lot of unresolved nodes called polytomies. This means that we have enough evidence to conclude that three or more groups are closely related to one another, but not enough evidence to say which of those groups are more closely related to one another than they are to the other groups. It's a mess, so take the exact relationships or even the number of orders that I present here with a grain of salt. As a result of this, I'm going to start by discussing the relationships we understand best, and we'll work backwards from there. Likely, the most well-understood clade of arachnids would be the tetrapulmonata. Tetrapulmonata means four-lunged. I would reckon you can guess how they got this name, but in case you didn't already assume this, they have two pairs of book lungs, or four lungs. This clade contains one order for each lung, four in total. The Thelephonida, the whip scorpions, the Schizomida, the short-tailed whip scorpions, the Amblypigi, the tailless whip scorpions, and the Araniae, the spiders. The two most closely related orders in this clade are the Thelephonida, the whip scorpions, and the Schizomida, the short-tailed whip scorpions. The Thelephonida, the whip scorpions, like this vinegaroon that we covered previously on this channel, uh, there are about 90 described species within this order. They're kind of the lobsters of the arachnids. They're long and relatively thin. Their pedipalps are modified into grasping claws that they use to dig and subdue prey. They walk primarily on six of their eight legs, with the front pair of legs modified into antenna-like appendages called antenniform legs. In the back, they possess a very long, thin telson, which, as far as I can gather, is purely sensory in function. They have no venom, but can spray a small amount of a substance containing acetic acid, vinegar, hence the name vinegaroon. They are found in Asia and in the Americas with a single species in Africa. They tend to inhabit warmer regions. The Schizomita are superficially very similar to the whip scorpions, however, they are considerably smaller, have a shorter telson, and have lost one pair of book lungs, and they don't spray vinegar. While they are smaller than their cousins, the whip scorpions, there are more described species, about 180. These are found in basically every hot and humid region of the planet. 
They're native to every continent except Antarctica and Europe, though they have even been introduced into Europe. They're found throughout the Pacific Islands, and I'm going to keep my eye out for them when I'm in the Amazon. The closest relative to these two orders are their crab-like cousins, the Amblypigi, the tailless whip scorpions, or whip spiders. While the Thelephonida and the Schizomita are lobster-shaped with a whip out back, these are short and wide with no whip at all. But their pedipalps and legs, those are next level. They have leg spans, in some cases approaching 28 inches. I've never seen one that big, but my goodness, it would blow my mind. And their antenniform legs are very long and whip-like to make up for their lack of a tail whip. Their pedipalps are still claw-like, but are much longer and thinner, and function like praying mantis arms on steroids. They still don't have any venom or acid, but they're faster moving and often are found on vertical surfaces. With about 100 described species, they are found in about every tropical and subtropical area on the planet. And the most distantly related order in this clade are the best known of all arachnids, the order Araniae. Spiders are actually pretty weird for arachnids. For one thing, their mouth claws, the chelicerae, are modified into venom-injecting fangs. So this is the first, but not the last, venomous arachnid that we're going to discuss. They are, however, the only ones to administer their venom with the chelicerae. And they spin silk from the spinnerets located at the rear of their epistosoma. They are the only ones that can do that, though other arachnids can spin silk. They walk on all eight legs, and their pedipalps essentially resemble small legs, as opposed to the claws, as was the case with, well, the whole rest of this clade. Tarantulas, like this one, particularly look almost like they have ten legs. This is the most speciose, at least in terms of the number of species that have been described, of any arachnid, with over 40,000 described species. They're found all over the world except Antarctica. There are sea spiders around Antarctica, but those are not true spiders, though they are chelicerates. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who allow us to try experiments like this one. I would love to make videos introducing you guys to literally like every clade of animals on the planet. That would fill me with unspeakable joy. And I learn a lot really from diving deep into these clades and just understanding them better. But the reality is, I don't know if anybody's going to watch this video or not. I, I hope they do because I would like to make more of them. But I, I, our, our supporters at Patreon really do allow us to, you know, step outside of our, our comfort zones, step outside of what we normally do and, and try, try something new every now and then. So thank you. If you'd like to see more content like this, if you'd like to support us in being able to, to do experiments like this in the future, or if you'd just like to check out the cool features we have for our patrons, please consider checking out our Patreon. From here, it gets really messy. So I'm just going to go through the remaining orders without making too much of how they are related to one another. But another group that is frequently considered to be closely related to the Tetrapulmonata are the Scorpiones, which are, unsurprisingly, the Scorpions. Scorpions have eight walking legs, with none modified into antenniform legs. Their pedipalps are modified into grasping claws. They're venomous, but they do not have chelicerae modified into fangs. Venom is injected, rather, by the complete other side of the scorpion. At the end of their epistosoma is a long metasoma with a telson modified into a venom-injecting stinger. And unlike their silly cousins that have only two pair of book lungs, scorpions have four pair. Eight lungs. No big deal. With over 2,000 species, they are found on every continent, except Antarctica, but they are most common in the tropics and subtropics. Related to the scorpions, but probably not as closely as you might think, are the pseudoscorpions of the order Pseudoscorpionida. These guys look like tiny scorpions. They have eight walking legs, their pedipalps are modified into claws, but they lack the long metasoma and stinger. This doesn't mean that they aren't venomous, though. Most pseudoscorpions are venomous, but they inject venom with their claws, which is super rad. Though they are rarely seen, mostly due to being small, there are more than 3,300 described species. Though they're most abundant in the tropics, they are found all over the world, including up into Canada. I don't know of any in Antarctica, though. A group that is more likely to be the closest relatives of the pseudoscorpions are the order Sulfugae, the sun or camel spiders. 
you're probably most likely to confuse sun spiders with true spiders. There are some significant differences, though. For starters, these do not have fangs or any sort of venom. They do have the largest and scariest looking chelicerae I have ever seen, though. They have eight walking legs, but it looks like ten because their pedipalps are leg-like and generally larger than most or all of the legs. Their epistosoma is segmented, where it is a single segment in spiders. And they do not produce silk. With over a thousand species, sun spiders are found on all continents except Australia and Antarctica, primarily in desert and semi-arid regions. Thought to be more closely related to the true scorpions are what I was taught growing up were the most venomous of all spiders, members of the order Opiliones, the harvestmen, or daddy long legs. I was taught that these were the most venomous spiders in the world, but their fangs were too small to penetrate your skin. But it turns out that there were a few problems with that statement. For starters, though these are arachnids that walk on eight legs, these aren't spiders. One of the easiest ways to distinguish them from true spiders is that the connection between the prosoma and the epistosoma is so broad that there is no clear distinction between the two body regions. And they have a big cluster of eyes, almost right in the middle of it all. But more importantly, they do not have venom at all. So they aren't spiders and they aren't venomous, but they are in the world. That part is true. With close to 7,000 described species, they are found on every continent, except Antarctica. Another group that you might confuse with the harvestmen are the mites of the order Apilioacarida. These really do look a lot like harvestmen, but they are generally smaller and they don't have a cluster of eyes, but rather around six eyes distributed around the body. There's only one family in about 50 described species, though they are found in tropical and subtropical locations around the globe. And these guys are now considered to be part of the super order Acariformes. This is one of the two big clades of mites, with 32,000 species described and possibly as many as a million total species. The phylogeny of this clade alone is really its own mess. These are mostly microherbivores, though they do utilize other resources. There are hundreds of thousands of species. And they are, interestingly enough, a major reason that many dart frogs produce poison. It is largely from ingesting these mites. Without them, they are not toxic. The other large group of mites are the parasitiformes, and they are, as you likely guessed, largely parasites of other organisms. This group includes ticks, and they make a living by taking something of value from the living without killing them, generally. These are found all over the world, unfortunately. There are about 12,000 described species, and likely more like 100 to 200,000 species in total. This includes about three different species that live on your face. Right now. Sorry. So there are hundreds of thousands of these guys that need to be described. But not that many people want to spend all day describing parasitic mites. Interestingly, they may actually be more closely related to the other arachnids than they are to the Acariformes. If you are looking for a field of research, we have a lot of work to do with mites. That's really the bottom line. And they're all over you. Okay, so I just have two more weird little orders to tell you about. First are the Palpigrady. These are often called micro whip scorpions because, in many ways, they look like teensy tiny vinegaroons. They are so tiny that they have no book lungs. Some have little lung sacs, but many have no lungs at all because they're small enough that their cells can get all the oxygen they need from the air directly. Other than being tiny and without book lungs, they can also be identified by their pedipalps that look more like those of sun spiders than of vinegaroons. These are found in tropical and subtropical soils on all continents except Antarctica, but only around 100 species have been described. This could be a good group to work with if you don't like mites. And last but not least is the order Ricinulae. These look like a spider with a really long second pair of legs, no eyes, and a little hood that can cover their chelicerae. With fewer than 100 described species, they are found mostly in Africa and the tropical regions of the Americas. And that takes us to the end of the arachnids. Like I said, the taxonomy is a bit of a mess and needs a lot of work. But that's an introduction. Let me know if this video inspired you to become an arachnologist. 
And as always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. There are well-known animals that you probably interact with regularly. Possibly more than you realize. That's terrifying. Oh, it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you such a bodacious creature? Are the scorpiones. How do you, that's how you'd pronounce it in Spanish, but I don't. I like it in Spanish. I think it's probably wrong. That's my problem. I can't, I can't read Latin names in anything but a Spanish accent. Yeah. No. <laughs> Los escorpiones, the mites of the order Apileo Acarita. Hey, Acarita. <laughs> These are mostly micro herbivores. That's a very British pronunciation, isn't it? Because it has an H in it. I mean, I'm always excited to see a scorpion. I've, I've never encountered a scorpion, not been excited, including when I lived in Peru and I found my first scorpion that I found in Peru on my bed as I was getting ready to go to bed. Yes. I was still thrilled. <laughs> I was like, oh, hooray, a scorpion. You know